I, mean, I understand they treated Rick like shit on the Wolfman too, which was oh no, really very odd. Yeah, he was. I think that was one of the one of the reasons that kind of nudged him into retiring. But because when I started on Men in Black Three, he was he had a lot of stories about not being happy on the Wolfman. Hey there, everyone! In today's segment of the Bart Mixon interview, the true master of makeup speaks about his longtime friend and fellow makeup savant. Rick Baker and the behind the scenes politics that challenged the great monster maker during the making of the Wolfman remake in 2010 and Wes Craven's Cursed. It's a hairy story of transformation for both the Wolfman as well as Rick Baker but it does end in triumph as Bart remembers their final collaboration on Men in Black 3 where both men created something truly magical. So also check out those other segments with Bart Mixon, it really is a fascinating story if you're a fan of horror movies or movies in general. But for now, let's check this out. Hope you enjoy. Don't forget to subscribe and leave a comment. I didn't realize that you had worked so closely with Rick Baker for some reason. I, I don't know. I, I knew that there was a link. I didn't realize it was such a such a big link. And I think I'm a little bit obsessed when it comes to the Wolfman. It's just one of my favorite characters of all time. And, and you know, because of that, American Werewolf in London is one of my favorite movies too. You know, and Rick Baker did all of that work. And, and not to step on anybody's toes, but just as a fan, what, what did you think of the Wolfman remake? I mean, the transformation scenes were unreal. Um, I, I like parts of it. I, I wish, well, I'd like to, because Rick built a lot of practical stuff that they didn't use. I'd like, and I've never gotten to see any of that. Um, I, I did, I like the design of the Wolfman. I like the stilt legs. I, th I thought that was a good kind of updating of the um, the Jack Pierce, you know, the classic. Like when, when I did It and we had our teenage werewolf, like uh, Norman Cabrera made that for me. And I was like, do me a, a 90s version of, you know, the 50s teenage werewolf. So I thought Rick's Wolfman was a nice updating of the Jack Pierce Wolfman, just like his makeup in Wolf was a nice updating of the Werewolf of London. The I, I would like to see the original cut of the movie. I heard it was, I remember Rick liked it better and was saying it was kind of more like a Hammer film. And I, I would really like to see what that was. I remember enjoying it. I mean, you got Hopkins and Del Toro, you know, Benicio. And like, I liked it better than like the Brandon Fraser, you know, mummy movies. Mm -hmm. And I was kind of surprised it didn't really kind of kickstart more of a universal revival because well that came out in like jesus what was well that 2010. was 2010 yeah i was gonna say rick had just finished that when we were starting on men in black three so yeah that it's a movie that i think it i think it cost something like between 100 and 150 million dollars so to call it underrated would be kind of strange but I, I i can't help but feel it's a little bit of a of an underrated movie because i didn't think it was as bad as critics may, made it out to be in fact on the contrary i thought it was pretty good right i mean if it could have been even better you know i mean i thought danny elfman's score was great i thought the transformation yeah. scenes in the asylum for one and the first transformation scene was really it was fun and it was done well and it was i thought it was a nice update from the from the 1941 yeah uh, original yeah. Yeah, no, definitely. I, I thought that was a better and more respectful than say, like, say the Van Helsing movie, which I wasn't mm. real, I wasn't much of a mm. fan of. That. Uh, which uh, Stephen Summers eh, again, he did the Mummy uh, too. So, um, well, yeah, I mean, like Joe Johnston as a director. I mean, I like the Rocketeer. I liked uh, yeah. America First Avenger. So, yeah, I, I was. Uh, and again, I, I would be curious to see the first cut of it because they did go in, and and I don't know if that was Johnston or if that was Universal saying, oh, we got a you know, so I think initially he delivered something that was more akin to a Hammer film, mm. you know, and then I think they were like, oh, you know, it needs like, you know, like quadruped running was the, all the thing then. So I think they were like, he's going to run up walls and stuff. Mm. And it's like, well, he's a wolf. <laughs> you, yeah. know? Uh, yeah, you know, he's yeah. not a monkey, but but I mean, but overall, no, I, I did. I recall liking it, but um, yeah, I, I think it did. I will agree. I think it got a lot of crap that it didn't necessarily deserve. I, I understand they treated Rick like shit on the Wolfman too, which was oh no, really very, very odd. Yeah, he was. I think that was one of the one of the reasons that kind of nudged him into retiring. But because when I started on Men in Black Three, he was he had a lot of stories about not being happy on the Wolfman, and then so watching him work on men in black three where he was almost like a kid again he, he was running around you know grabbing monster parts and going up in his office and you know putting things together and so you could really see the enthusiasm and 
just it was like the old Rick. It was like, oh, he's, you know, he's having fun and he's making cool stuff. And then he's, you know, art directing him. You know, he had a great crew that was making a lot of good stuff. So I think uh, and Barry, him and Barry Sonnenfeld had a very good you know, relationship and, and the Ken Ralston, who was the digital supervisor, him and Rick were like high school buddies or whatever. So men in black, I think was a much better, you know, experience, experience for him, across yeah. the board. Yeah. Then, well, I mean, if, which I think he needed coming off the wolf. If I'm a universal studio executive and I'm about to make the wolf man and I get the guy to do the special effects on the werewolf character, the same guy who happened to do an American werewolf in London, you know, I kind of keep quiet and I go, do what you feel you need to do. You would think so. When Rick was involved with Cursed for a little bit, that Wes Craven the movie. The Wes Craven, uh, Wes, Wes yeah. Craven werewolf movie, yeah. When he took the job, he, Rick was like, you know, we don't have enough pre-production time for you guys to have an opinion. He goes, you you know, you're coming to me because I'm Rick Baker. So you just need to trust my, and they're like, hey, you're, you're Rick Baker. You know, we agree, whatever you say. And then as he would start finishing stuff, which I was only there at the beginning of it, then they would start going like, well, we don't like this. And can you change that? And and then at some point he was like, you know what? I'm done. So even if they, especially these days, they might promise you that, but they're not going to, mm-hmm. they want to stick their fingers and everything. So, well, if there was, if, if, if I was ever to sit down with Rick Baker, I think the main movie I would speak with him about is Wolf, because I think it's also one of those underrated movies. I really loved that one with Jack Nicholson and Michelle Pfeiffer. Another movie that got a lot of crap for reasons I don't really understand. Maybe it wasn't horror enough. Or maybe it wasn't romance enough. But I thought, again, it was a, a lovely take on the werewolf mythology. I thought Rick Baker's work on it was great, a little bit more subtle. You know, it yeah. gives us a... You know, really great. But having said all of that, uh, you know, you were speaking a moment ago about uh, Pennywise. And and let me just say for the record, as much as I loved Annie Machete's version, I really did. I thought I thought it was great. I did miss I was a teenage werewolf in there. I did miss the Michael Landon werewolf character. I know it was updated to to a more contemporary. I think they went 20 years from 1960 to 1980. And that's how they kind of played it. But I would have loved to have seen a werewolf. Yes. Uh, yeah, there were some uh, stuff like that that I kind of, that I did miss. And there wasn't even like, it wasn't like, well, we've got like a more modern werewolf. You know, like it could have been like the Oliver Reed werewolf, you know. Um, but um, but yeah, so some, some of those choices were kind of curious, but I've never read the book. I'm only familiar with, you know, story-wise with the one I did. And I, and I'm sure it's, deviated vastly from the book just because the book's you know super thick hold on to your red balloons everyone because next time bart also known as papa pennywise for reasons you'll find out in the next episode will take us behind the scenes of the legendary miniseries it where bart truly got to let his talents shine he'll be comparing the classic 1990 miniseries with the recent andy machete adaptations also sharing what the one and only stephen king thought of the miniseries and he'll also reveal a very special gift from a particular particularly illustrious fan. But I also want to hear from you guys. Did you watch the It series and the movies? What are your thoughts? Drop a comment, share your views, and let's keep the conversation going. On that note, everyone, I wish you all a wonderful week. Stay safe, stay happy, and most of all, stay horror. Gaze into the abyss. <laughs>